edition of the program corporate governance platform brought to you by the institute of charter secretaries and administrators of nigeria ixan i am Fumi omoburi ixan is a leading recognized professional body in nigeria that's dedicated to enhancing the status and practice of corporate governance and public administration Today on the program, we want to look at roles and contributions of the recommended committees to corporate governance. And our guest this morning is Mr. Babatunde Wura, FCIS, is council member, chairman, implementation monitoring committee, and supervising chairman of, of the sectoral groups of the institute. Good morning, Mr. Wura. Good morning, Fumi. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you for joining and us. Happy, and happy new year. Yes. Happy new year to you too. <laughs> All right. With me in the studio is Mr. Kade Ketefe, FCIS Head of Research, Ixan. Good morning, Mr. Ketefe. Good morning, Fumi. Good morning to you, our special guest, Mr. Babatunde Pele Wura, FCIS, and all our listeners. Good morning. Good morning Kyle to you. Kyle Day, KTFA, FCIS. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take this message and we'll be right back. The world is constantly evolving into a knowledge-based economy where skills and competencies constitute the lifeblood of public and corporate governance. You therefore need to empower yourself to fit into this new world by gaining basic knowledge and improving your skill set in the governance-focused disciplines. That is why every aspiring as well as practicing professional in governance field needs Ixan. Ixan? What is Ixan? Ixan is a leading statutorily established professional body dedicated to enhancing the status and practice of corporate governance and public administration. Ixan members are trained as chartered secretaries and administrators. Who are chartered secretaries and administrators? Chartered secretaries are high-ranking governance professionals with a broad base of skills, unique amongst other professions. They are trained in law, finance, accounting, administration, strategy development and corporate governance. In today's world, chartered secretaries and administrators discharge a wide range of duties and responsibilities, including functioning as chairman of companies, executive directors, non-executive directors, company secretaries, risk managers, compliance managers, board evaluators, and corporate governance evaluators. That is interesting. How then do I become a chartered secretary and administrator? Good. Go to the Institute's website, www.exan.org. You can also visit the National Secretariat of Ixan at Plot 6, Elephant Cement Way, Alausa Ikeja, Lagos, to get full information on how to become members. Ixan, the hub of governance professionals. All right, so corporate governance platform right here. And as I said earlier, we're looking at roles and contributions of the recommended committees to corporate governance and uh mr batsundik Willywura fcis is our guest all right mr Willywura, let's begin this way what are the committees that are traditionally recognized in corporate governance parlance as board committees uh thank you very much uh for me just before mentioning those uh, uh committees that are recommended uh, I want us to go back a little bit to see that those committees are for what, uh, <clears throat> to what end. I will go back to the company itself, an organization. An organization has been set up for a purpose, any organization. Um, one of those uh, purposes would be to end profit, uh, to be a going concern, to provide uh, uh, employment and uh, resources for those people who are concerned, the stakeholders. And that's why, uh, and to go on a sustainability uh, path so that the company can go on and on and on and on uh, on ending. But having done this, the shareholders don't, uh, the shareholders of the companies are not those who manage uh, the company itself. And that's why they have agents in uh, what we call the board of directors. 
But the board of directors are people with uh, so many people of diverse interests, qualifications, and uh, experiences. Uh, so if they are together, they cannot all be doing the same thing at the same time uh, to uh, make the company uh, achieve its objectives. So they have to have uh, committees among themselves within the uh, board of directors. And that is why governors thought it fit to have uh, this uh, group of uh, people on the board to have their separate um, committees to look at different uh, and to perform different rules uh, on the board. Uh, in this case, to answer your question now directly, we have an audit committee of uh, any organization and KAMA has uh, made this uh, mandatory. Every company or organization must have audit committee. Um, if you are uh, a public company, the Kama has stipulated now that you have to have a five-member committee uh, on your audit, and that uh, these five people must be people of uh, who have uh, financial literacy, and that one of them uh, must be uh, at least one of them must be a chartered accountant and must have relevant recent experience uh, so that uh, uh, the, the committee might be able to carry out his work objectively and professionally. That's audit committee. Uh, on the board, we have another committee called the remuneration committee, not in any sequence anyway. Okay. Uh, remuneration committee. These are the uh, committee that are set uh, aside to have uh, responsibilities for determining uh, Hello, Mr. Kaliwura. Hello. Okay, I guess uh, we'll have to reestablish that connection with uh, Mr. Kaliwura right there. Can you hear me, sir? Hello? Can you hear me? Am I being heard? Okay, I can hear you now, sir. You were talking about the remuneration committee. Yes, I, I mentioned remuneration committee, audit committee, and uh, we have a nomination committee. Uh, these are the committee uh, set up to look at the uh, the, the appointment of new directors into the company to uh, these are the people who now again look at the structure the uh, mandate the um, qualifications and experience that the chairman should have and they manage the continuity of the business that succession planning this is the nomination committee okay. that's what they are set to do and uh, we have risk management committee these are to look uh, at the any risk that the company might be facing. They look at it and they continue to monitor it and report to the whole board. So these are the essential committees. Some companies do have uh, different names for uh, different committees. And in some cases, there are roles merged. Some committees are merged. Uh, in some cases, like for our institute, we have our audit and risk management committee match together. Uh, these are the uh, committees that are on the board. All right. Um, now, the court stipulates uh, independent non-executive directors as uh, integral members of all these committees. Why do you think this is required? Yes. Uh, we have uh, directors on the board there are some that are called non-executive director and the executive directors executive directors are those that have a day-to-day -day responsibility in the company they are called executive directors but non-executive directors are those that have their own jobs everywhere somewhere else but are contributing to the strategic uh, uh, vision of the company and they monitor how the company behaves these people 
bring in what I call Becky, broad experience, credibility, and integrity to the affairs of the company. And they can take decision uh, very independently because they are not uh, employee or, as it were, officer of the company. They are able to bring other experiences that are garnered elsewhere where they are coming to further the um, uh, the, the the progress or promos, uh, promoting the success of the company. And these are the non-executive director. There are one other significant uh, area I want to touch again here is that of independent non-executive director. All directors are expected to be independent, yes, but when you have a uh, Independent non-executive director are position now that are created about like 10 years ago is now been the feature in the uh, Nigerian uh, corporate uh, world. These are the people who, that are, uh, these are one, uh, one of them, independent non-executive director will have uh, uh, the characteristics of all the non-executive director, but again, uh, there are certain things that they should not uh, be involved in, like not having um, shares in the company, which is more than they can have. It might be possible that they have a share capital, uh, uh, shares in the capital of the company, but not more than 0.01% okay. of the share capital of the company. Anybody who has more than these are considered not to be independent enough to serve as an independent non-executive director. All right. There are some other uh, things that they should not have, connections with the company, with the chairman or with the managing director, to be so uh, tagged as okay. in independent non-executive director. All right. Um, before I would like to go, Mr. Kweliwura, uh, would you say it's necessary for a small company to establish all these board committees? Um, yes, it's uh, progressive. Uh, however a company might be, you still have to look at your objectives and how to manage your company profitably, professionally, and uh, uh, to co comply with the rules and regulations uh, of law. So you need to have uh, these committees. But uh, if you are so small as not to be able to have all those there, uh, because the boards, uh, private company might have uh, not many board members. So distributing these, uh, uh, apart from the resources that it takes, distributing these uh, areas of uh, uh, committees might be uh, too much for them, but it's progressive. They mm -hmm. should be heading towards having uh, these uh, uh, committees, but if they do not have, they need to explain. And mm -hmm. some of our clients that we uh, do their uh, board evaluation, we do advise them, you have to explain, apply and explain why you are not able to have those uh, right. uh, committees. But, right. uh, eventually, you should be tending towards having them because they are very key to the success and sustainability of your company. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Babatunde Kwili. We are FCIS Council Member, uh, Chairman, Implementation Monitoring Committee, and Supervising Chairman of uh, the Sectoral Groups of uh, the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan. Thank you so much for joining us on Corporate Governance Platform this morning, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Ketefe, will Ixan rate uh, the provisions of the Nigerian Code of Corporate Governance 2018 as uh, conforming with the best practices? Thank you very much for me for this question. The answer uh, in the summary is yes. The provisions of the code on the committee system are very sound. When you look at principle 11 of the code, you see that it empowers the board to delegate her duties and responsibilities to well-structured committees. And the, the board is enjoined to do this without abdicating its responsibilities, its overall responsibility. The same principle 11 of the code contains 16 recommended practices, which summarize best practices on the committee system. 
So these professions are well conceived, they are practicable, and they essentially uh, uh, represent acceptable standard on the subject. Ixan was deeply involved in the drafting of the code, so I made a own contribution to ensure that the code generally attained the global best standards. So the, this, uh, the, the, the provisions of the code on many issues, not only on the committee system alone, reflect the best practices. So we advise the company and organization to abide by the provision of the code. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Kadi Kete for FCIS, Head of Research, Ixan. And that's how we wrap it up this morning on Corporate Governance Platform, brought to you by the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan. We'll be back again next week, Wednesday, 10, 15 a.m., right here on Equity 9.7 FM. I am for me, or more Enjoy the rest of the day.